Heck, he wants to be with a new team. Get on the deal. Well, good afternoon. Oh, heck no. All right. Uh, this is formats a little different. It won't be a lot of stuff that you saw the last time. But again, uh, first rule of my meetings, and since the president of the association or council gets to set the rules, please hold your questions to the end. There's going to be a Q&A. See that? Oh, no, I don't care about that. Um, so we'll start off. I'll give you a quick update of what the council uh, activities and things that we did this year, followed by Tom Tango on the physical plant and then social and health services with Sarah. And we'll end with Christy and what you always wait for is the finance. So hold all those questions. We do have Q&A. And we will, at the end of that, I will call the meeting closed and then um, we will have a, a brief update on the benefit fund. And I think that'd be very important for all of you to hear that. I don't know if we can, How, oh, that, go back to, go back to that one. Dave, the, that no, the other one. The the one that this one's on. There. Is that better, Martin? All right. And you still can hear me back there? I love that peanut gallery back there. Boy. Yeah. Hit them home runs. Okay. Um as we, as I talked about in the last meeting, and you'll see a little bit more update on that from Christy, that our occupancy rate here at Woodland Pond continues to enjoy the best of the New York CCRCs. And um, it's uh, rewarding to see that. Um, also, as you remember, this was the opportunity to be the first to be involved in a multi-county emergency drill. And at the same time, we had to respond on that day to an actual emergency, smoke and a fire alarm. We had the emergency drill. And then to top it off, as I told Michelle, she had a triple play. We had a FEMA alert when we were all supposed to be quiet and the sing songs of our cell phones broke that silence very, very well. One of, and again, this is a, this, most of these you will see are, are things that we as residents and as a community here are doing for our community of New Paltz and Ulster County. Um, through the efforts of both residents and staff, we formed the Adopt the Highway, and you should see they cleaned up uh, Route 9, uh, 299 and the access roads. I think that's a great thing. And I think you have another one coming up shortly. It's to be determined. Yeah, okay. And then um, the Alzheimer's uh, contributions and everything. And we were the largest contributor from Ulster County this year. And we were also so the largest turnout for a team uh, at the walk a couple of weeks ago. So kudos to all of you and to the staff for making Woodland Pond uh, stand out in that arena. Okay, from the council standpoint, things that are happening, um, there is a, an annual report that will be filed and um, you will be able to read everybody's, all the committee's uh, highlights of what they've done this year. The design and decor group is, committee has taken on the task of trying to categorize all of the catalog, I should say, all of the um, artwork. And that is going to be an ongoing project. We have many, many, and 
we need to know who and what they are. The other one is land conservation um, is in an effort to uh, take advantage of things available, have made a, applied for a grant to, as you can see, upgrade and improve the uh, McBride and uh, Branch Trails, which is something that's not been done before. Again, it's reaching in a different direction, thinking outside the box. The Health Committee um, has been working very hard with dining to improve the uh, relationship of meal services and food in the health center. And the re uh, reports now are coming in that positive uh, traction is made in that, that area. Also that the neighbor core has initiated, uh, been initiated to help the uh, health center staff in doing things like mail and other activities. And this is an excellent start to keep us as a community. Uh, landscaping and SUSCOM, uh, the SUSCOM Land Management Task Force are working on many areas to try to improve um, the imp imp imposed, you know, trying to get away from pesticides and, and things like the chemicals. So I'm not saying this very well, but it's a, another initiative that I think is, is very good. And then um, from dining, there's been good improvements on the uh, things like the pub is open now 12 to two, the happy or not machine is a very useful tool. It gives feedback immediately to the staff and to Amy uh, on what needs to be done or what things you would still like to see we're not going to get to 100%, so, but at least there's more um, immediate feedback. And then greet your neighbor. We, I think it started as round robin, but greet your neighbor is another way now to, uh, with new residents, to share your 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 meal with them in your social time. At this point, and that was my portion, so I promised you I'd be quick. This time, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Tango. Hello. Oh, good. Did I get the right? Was I? All right, there we go. All right. I just want to talk about the, the physical plant committee. First thing I want to do is thank everybody that uh, comes to the political, I mean, comes to the physical plant committee and participates. And uh, it's been good. We've had some. I feel like this year we've uh, actually done a few things that are tangible, like some things that are a good model for going forward on uh, things that we've done. And we'll go over some of those. Um, all right, first thing, the, uh, the big one, the new cottages. Uh, the first two uh, were slated to be open or completed by November 15th. I'm saying that with my fingers crossed, but I, I think we'll do that. The third one, Mm, maybe in January, Oops, yeah, fingers crossed. Um, HVAC upgrades. And on this one, a lot of things this year have really been impacted by supply chains. The, the units that are going on the roof for the wings, it just took forever to get them. And then when we got them, scheduling the crane and just getting them this any getting physically getting things is very difficult even though it's promised um that it's just things aren't available and they, eventually we get them so, but we will very soon have the hvac upgrades completed in the wings right now there will be heat and in a few weeks, there'll be AC. So next summer, you'll be cool in the wings. So um, solar on cottages, that's um, in work, in progress. Uh, that's being everything we have. The, the contractor has all the items. There's just a big holdup with Central Hudson. Central Hudson, uh, I'm not, 
I don't want to speak ill of them, but I am. Um, they're just, they're holding it up. That's really the problem. Uh, the contractor is ready to do it. There's a permit, everything, we're just waiting on Central Hudson. But that should be, I feel like it should be happening any day, but I would have said that back in May also. So, all right. Um, other things. Uh, it, the, we're in, we increased the H, the uh, electric vehicle charging stations. There's four more that are installed over by the health center entrance. And I'm going to tell you that next week they're going to be put, they're going to be live. There's a breaker that we're waiting for. We waited a long time for it. And when they opened it, it was the wrong one. And supposedly on the seventh, we're getting the correct one. So again, we're waiting on that. It's just supply chain stuff, but that'll be up and there'll be four more stations operating and the one that doesn't work over here is getting replaced also next week so within a week or two we should have six working stations um we um and this the the bike rack this is something i want to talk about that uh, it really was a good outcome of the ops committee we all had an opinion of what should happen with bike racks and, and bike storage and we came out with a pretty good uh, uh, compromise on a lot of people's parts, and I think it's pretty good. We have, we have, we put two covered bike racks up, and we worked out a good um, winter storage method for for resident bicycles, and we created a room for that. So that worked out, and we'll see how that works. That's pretty good. Um, also, we came up with a plan to store. Um, boats, kayaks, canoes. We now have a storage rack for small boats down the access road, down behind the cottages. There's a access. There's a. a we just finished building it. Um, a nice rack to store those uh, units on, and that works out pretty well too. Also, we we have we started trialing. And we got to get back to finishing this up. We want to get to a spot where residents can have access to works hub and put their own work orders in. And what that would do is you put a work order in that says my stove doesn't work. And we send the maintenance guy there. You're going to get an email that says, we got your, your work order. When we go to your apartment and you're not home and we can't get in or we don't go, you're going to get an email that says we went there. Um, if we go there, you're not home, but we didn't fix it because we need a part. You're going to get an email that tells you we were there, we ordered a switch, and we'll get back to you. So all of that's pretty good, and we've, tr we've been trying that with some members of the ops committee. It's working well, and going forward, that's going to be quite – you will always be able to call concierge and put a work order in. This isn't the way you're going to have to do it. It's just some people wish to. And if you wish to, great. If you want to call concierge, great. But going forward, we'll have a lot more flexibility. Oh, the shop policy. Oh, good point. I went right past that. The resident shop policy, we worked out some new policies of how to handle pe the residents working in the resident shop who does what who's responsible for what made things a little clearer and a lot safer i think uh a works up oh i already i should i, I should have waited for this slide oh well works up is the program we use to assign work order when you call a work order into concierge it goes into works up it's a program every morning when noel comes in he looks at the work orders he sees what needs to be done? He assigns those work orders to the maintenance techs who go out and do the, and do that work, and it also keeps track. Uh, so we're gonna, like I say, we'll be moving to a system whereby any resident that wishes to have their own works hub username can have so, and you'll be able to put work orders in for your uh, home, not other people's home, but your own home. Um. Oh, this is a screenshot from uh, work. 
uh, not from us, but from another company, another place. And this is just more, this is what you're going to see as you go through it. Um, all right. So, all right. So Tom made this, yeah, the, there's an example of a work order of what you're going to get. You're going to put in, you have a serious leak under your sink and there it is. It's a very serious leak, not a fun leak. Um, going ahead in 2024. Um, I want to start doing a lot more roadway repair. Uh, we're going to be doing some in the coming week, but uh, going next year, I want to do a lot more. Um, the the cottage planters, the planters that are in front of each cottage, that are not there solely for being planters. They're also there to be protection for the gas meters that are right behind them. Uh, a lot of those meat, a lot of those planters are falling apart. They look pretty bad. We're going to be start to replace them Monday. This coming Monday, uh, I just sent an email to all the people in the cottages and you have a letter in your mailbox about it. But Monday, we're going to start replacing them. So that'll that'll be starting Monday. With the same, well, yes, the same thing, but not made out of wood this time. We're going to have them made out of concrete block, engineered, so they're going to last a while. Not like the ones, currently ones, where they're made out of wood and they rotted away. But they're going to look the same. They're going to they're going to look exactly the same. Um, I also want to fit do some work around the ponds, uh, especially the north one. We want to folk. We one of the one of the big bears that we want to wrestle in the ops committee is parking, um, and where people park, handicap parking. Who needs it? How do we assign it? Who parks where? There's a lot of issues, and that is like. Sort of like, you know, herding cats. We're going to try to tackle that one, but we'll see what we can do. Um, HVAC, continued replacements. Our HVACs, uh, you know, we've been open 12 years. A lot of our units, like in your apartments, if there's a problem with your unit, with the coil or the condenser or anything that has Furion in it, I really don't fix the unit. I replace the unit. It would cost me about four thousand dollars to change your Freon. For forty two hundred, I get a whole new unit. So going forward, there's going to be a lot more HVAC replacements, and also we're going to have to start doing something about starting to program replacement of roof sections, like not the whole roof and not right away, but you know, where the roof has been up there 13, 14 years. So we need to start thinking about, you know, uh, slowly changing some of that. Um, oh, we'll take it on the ops committee. We can do this too. Not a problem. All right. Thank you. Hi everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Sarah Leonard. I'm the resident services director. So just to say a little bit about what I do at Woodland Pond before we get into what I'll be talking about. Um, so I supervise the wellness nurses, that's Angel and Mary Jo. I also supervise the activities coordinator, who is Gretchen, and the fitness coordinator, who is Grace. So I'm involved in the wellness piece and in the lifestyle piece of Woodland Pond. So I get to be involved in a variety of things, which I really enjoy. So one of my primary purposes is to provide social work type services to support you as you experience age-related changes that might affect you mentally, physically, emotionally, or otherwise. So I provide this support to you by listening confidentially to your issues or concerns, and if appropriate, I can make recommendations to you on how you might be able to receive the help or assistance that you need. So my door is always open to you. My phone is always available, my email. I really enjoy talking with you. So if you have hesitation about coming to see me about something that's on your mind, please, please just release your hesitation and come and give me a try. So, <laughs> so I'm also involved in transitions to the health center. So if someone in independent living is really in need of a higher level of care, then I'm the person who initiates that conversation with them. And I'm the person who walks with them through that process and through that transition. So now onto this slide, I wanted to talk a moment about the mental health and wellness task force. 
This is a group that's made up of residents and Woodland Pond staff. And this group was formed due to requests from residents to have more mental health related programs and support services. And this is really a, um, a terrific group, one that I really enjoy being a part of. And the residents who are involved in this task force are Tamar Oppler, Wayne Lavender, Ronnie Sue Jaffe, Pat Houck, and Rhea Stein. And so what this group does is we talk about different topics that may be of interest to all of you that have to do with mental health and overall well-being. So if you have ideas on different topics that might be of interest, you can feel free to come to one of the group members that I mentioned or to myself and suggest an idea, and then we'll take it into consideration and see what we can do to facilitate something up along that line. So over the past year, I just want to talk about um, So th this group has um, created and facilitated a number of different programs, and I just want to list them off to you. I don't know if we're going to, how many slides we have here. Oh, here we go. This is my first time doing something like this. So other people are very proficient with it. I'm a little slow. So some of the programs that you've seen over the last year are the transition panel discussions. The first one was about how it is to transition from the outside community into Woodland Pond and become a resident. And the second transitions panel discussion was all about transitions you experience while you're in Woodland Pond. And both of these, in my opinion, were just really great discussions where we really got down into it, into what the um, issues and concerns are. Other, another program was polypharmacy, which was with Gerda Mazel. Gerda also recently did solo aging. We had mindfulness in a minute with Nina Smiley. We also had the Alzheimer's Association come and provide the latest information and research on Alzheimer's and related dementias. That was a fascinating presentation. We really got up to the minute information on the latest treatments and the latest testing that's now available. We also had building resilience in the age of anxiety with Amy Nitza. We had calmer waters, which was for caregivers of people with Alzheimer's. We had compassion and choices, which has to do with end of life. We had healthy living for your brain and body, which was from the Alzheimer's Association. And then also out of this task force, we were able to have the Alzheimer's caregivers support group start, start here and the hospice grief support group start here. And this group has also been instrumental in our search for finding practitioners who can come and provide uh, therapy type services here. So I just wanted to highlight that group as something that in the last year has um, contributed a lot to um, our health and wellness, which is one of my primary focuses here for independent living. Okay, Christy. Hi, I'm Christy Battistoni, Director of Finance. So I'm going to report on a few things, um, kind of where we are right now at September 30th, 2023, and then we'll talk about uh, the month monthly service fees, et cetera. So um, I gave, this is what I provide to the board every month. It's called a uh, financial flash report. Um, so I did a little bit of an abridged version for you guys. And then Tom Gilder, with all his fancy graphics, put it up like this. So I think it looks great. looks better than what you sent me in the email. Okay. Um, so the board looks for certain things. So um, this is, uh, so it's highlighted in what I give them. So the first thing they always want to see is where we are with cash. So the first column, the year to date is what we are actual as of September 30th. Everything here is gonna be as of September 30th. Um, so our year to date cash and investments is uh, 13.7 million compared to our budgeted number of 12.3. So we have a positive variance right now at the end of September. The next line is our day's cash on hand. And why this is 
is important is we have two co two bond covenants that we have to report on uh, debt service coverage ratio, which is just once a year in December, and then our days cash on hand number, which is measured uh, in June and in December. Um, by December, we have to have a day's cash on hand number of 125. Right now, um, we're at 118 with a budget of 91. We're expected to end December in the high 140s. And then when you drop down to the next, the profit and loss, this is basically um, our gap, which is generally a accepted accounting principles. It's basically our method of accounting, which is a, an accrual-based accounting method. And so that's shown to the board in two different ways, through the accrual-based method and then actually cash-based method. So our revenue at 930 was is 18.8 .8 with a budget of 17.8. So a variance of a positive uh, 677,000. And our expenses, um, at 21 million compared to uh, a 22 budget. So again, a positive variance. So we ended September as far as our accrual based method with a positive variance. And as far as cash base, so this is basically cash. It takes out like depreciation and things like that. Our revenue number, again, positive to budget, 15 million compared to the 14 million. So a positive variance and our expense is also at a positive variance. So September, looking pretty good. The next thing um, is that's reported to the board every month are our entrance fees and our refunds. Um, so our year-to-date entrance fees that we've brought in so far is $9.5 million this year compared to a budgeted amount of 6.1. So it's a positive $3.3 .3 million right now. Our refunds, um, I've paid back 3.9 million compared to a budget of 3.7. So that's actually a negative variance, but only by $257,000 at this point in time. Uh, so net wise, we're positive of $3 million as far as uh, refunds. The other thing that I um, report to the board is always uh, census. Um, so this year, year to date, we've had 19 move-ins um, uh, we've had 20 um, move outs or deaths or whatever. So right now we actually have one vacant unit that um, is being uh, settled on this month. So we landed at 200 out of a possible 201 this month, but we have lots of people in the hopper and you'll see that on the next page. And then the census reporting for the health center, um, the actual occupancies um, to the budget net for the three units um, were at a positive 77 days um, in the health center right now. These are the percentages uh, of actual and um, skilled assisted in memory care compared to budget, but overall positive um, in our days over there. And that is uh, yes for the month. Next. Um, okay, so this just kind of shows um, each unit where the occupancy was at the end of September, the wait lists um, and the number of wait lists that we have on each unit. Um, so right now we actually have one spruce available, but like I said, it's going to be settled on this month. Um, as you can see, we have large numbers of wait lists um, on the larger units. I guess that's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so resident monthly service fees. So Ziegler is an investment management company um, that deals highly in um, senior living care and health. And they put out a newsletter um, because that, and reported, and they report uh, basically between like 300 to 400 not-for-profits nationwide. And these are the um, percentage of increases in their monthly service fees from 2019 going forward. But basically, I'm just going to kind of talk about the, the past couple of years. So in 2023, the minimum increase of all those facilities was zero 
the average was 6%. Some facilities increased their monthly service fees 15% last year. Projected for this year, basically zero, 5% is the median and some are uh, increasing 12%. We have been pretty much always within the median, if not lower than the median for several years. Like last year, we increased 5%. The average was 6%. This year, the increase is gonna be 4.5% uh, and the average, um, the median, I should say, not the average, the median is 5%. And this basically shows what the change will be at the 4.5% for each unit and then the second person fee. So this is what your monthly service fee was last year with the 4.5% across the board. This is where it's gonna land in uh, 2024. Basically. Uh, oh. What do you need? Well, there we are in the Q and A. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna put it on. I don't know. Right there. Okay, we can leave it like that. Uh, so, do you want to be the mediator for questions? Because I don't know if it's going to be for Tom or Sarah. All of this will be made available, so it'll be on. Sorry. Um. Yeah. So, um, our monthly, our board approved our budget today. Um, including our rates and our budget. Um, it has to be in, uh, we have to notify you 60 days in advance of increasing a rate. Um, so you'll be getting the letters um, with your November 1st bill. Um, and it's always subject to Department of Financial Services approval. Um, so assuming they do approve, those will be the rates in January. Uh, so I just wanted to add that. Yes, as promised. Q and A, anything? Oh, hello, Jim. Uh, Push you walk around. Right? No, no problem. Can we get copies of your slides? All this whole presentation will be made available online, or you can go to the uh, concierge and ask for a copy tomorrow. <laughs> he did today. a great job with all these slides, didn't he? I thought he did a fantastic job. Tomorrow, and. I have a question for Tom Tango. Yes, um, the library has been waiting for four years yes. for new lights. Yes. What's the prognosis? If not, um, I would say by tomorrow or the next day, Michelle is going to be signing a PRF for the lights. That That's 100%. Oh, P oh, PRF is a PO, a purchase order. A In other words, like, you know. Request to purchase. Right. Um, the, the the lighting engineer uh, has specced uh, some different uh, all LED lights that are going to go in and make the entire library much brighter. Also a question for you. Um, I'm cold in here. I was here at a performance Monday evening, a concert. It was freezing. All right. Can't couple, we do better? A couple I'm things. One of the things that I think we should, we got to put back up on for, or we got to add to the ops committee. I, and I've said this a lot of times, I can make a room any temperature, but I can't make it that you're comfortable, you're comfortable, and you're comfortable. 
So what I need to know is what temperature resident council wants a room to be set at. Because like, for example, the fitness room, I get calls every night, almost every night, that it's too cold or too hot. It's the same temperature. And the the ops committee decided that it should be at, I think it was 68 degrees. And that's what it's at. So when people come and they say it's too cold or too hot, they need to talk to the ops committee because somebody has to tell me what temperature it needs to be set at. Same thing in this room. I hear, I hear this, uh, you know, Tuesday morning, everybody attacked me. I didn't hear anything about it. If somebody had called me or if somebody called concierge and they would have called me, I can adjust the temperature at night, but nobody, I, nobody called. Um, the, when I looked back on the log, the temperature of the room was the same temperature it is every night. It's, it's 71 degrees. It's been 71 degrees forever. So in other words, so I just need to, you know, you know so like when you're cold, like there's a thermometer here, there's a thermometer in most rooms. So like if you're cold, like right now, if you're cold right now, this room is 70 degrees. That's what it's set at. It's set to be 70 degrees. So if, if you call and say you're too cold, it's 70. I need to know what temperature the room is, what temperature you want it to be. But what I can't keep doing is every is keep changing it. I can't make a hundred people happy. I can hey. make, you know, so, so that's one of the, one of the things I want, we can work with the ops committee coming next this year is what temperature every room should be. And we can, we can do that. But if at any point you're uncomfortable, tell call concierge and, you know, tell, tell, you know, tell them, because I got a lot of people commented about Monday night, but again, I didn't hear it until Tuesday morning. Next questions. Anybody else with questions? I just want public confirmation. Those two, like sinkholes in yes. cl close to the uh, place where you uh, um, plug your car in will be filled and yes. level. Yes. By when? It was. I. It was. Should have been done two days ago, but the black the blacktop guy just didn't show up. But it will be. Yeah. Yep. Question. When will the pool room be fixed? The the temperature. The 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 motor that I need is is it came this morning. It is downstairs in my in my office, and the contractor is supposed to show up tomorrow morning and put it in. Tom, we got a question about the chargers for the cars. Are they all level two type chargers or any yes. fast chargers? Yes, just level two. Yep. All all four yep. six whatever it is. Yep. Okay. Questions? Questions? When are you going to finish the LED light switching in the various residencies? Right now, we, we're out of the building and we're into the cottages. We've done the three cottages so far. Once we finish the cottages, then I need to come. We need to come back in and figure out a way to get into the apartments that we didn't get to. I would say off the top of my head, it's like 20% maybe. And, and if we don't do it, we can do it through the on the on the preventative maintenance going forward but right now we're through the building and into the cottages yeah. questions geez i love this that tom's getting all these questions usually when it's my finance meeting i get them all. <laughs> so like you can ask me questions about for, for rob stuff too i'll answer <laughs> anybody else with any questions um i uh, have a hard time understanding why the uh, <laughs> rent for the dogwood is and the oak is more than the cottages. It's because being in the building has a lot more perks than being outside the building. I mean, that's always been a question. Years ago, it was originally, it was the opposite, the, the white birches were more expensive. Um, and then we had an issue when we couldn't um, sell them. And then we did, ended up lowering the costs and um, were able to fill them. But yeah, there's many more perks with being inside the building versus being outside and having to come up here for everything, dinner, your mail, everything.
Uh, could you give an approximate percentage of what the additional six cottages will be adding to Woodland Ponds revenue? Um, I would say about 500, 500,000 a year. No, 500,000 for the six based on their monthly service space. Yep. Well, right here is what they're right. Oh, I, I thought you know, silver birch right here. That is what they are. So the monthly service fee on a white birch is going to be 54.77 and for a silver is going to be 57.49. And yes, it, it is less. Um, I mean, the entrance fees were not, but um, the monthly service fee is. And again, it's the convenience of being in the building versus being out of the building. Uh, Mr. Tab. I want to revisit the Monday night concert and the setting. Right. Do you have a way to test when the thermostat says 70, whether the room in fact is 70 degrees? I came in with just a shirt. Everyone else had sweaters and winter coats right. and were able to stay through the whole concert. I had to leave because all I had was a shirt. And I, I don't believe uh, that the temperature in the room was actually 70. Uh, if you tell me it is, I accept your statement, but yeah. Well, and I was I can do it two ways. One, I can log on from the computer and I can see what the computer tells me it is. But also most rooms, this one included, there's a thermometer right here. So when people call and say they're cold, I always ask what the temperature is in the room. Because if I had, because the reason is because if somebody called me and said that it's 70, but they're cold, then I know the system is working. If somebody calls me and says they're cold, but this says 64, well, then I know the system's not working and I have maintenance here and I would get them here right away. And if they can't fix it, I would get the contractor here right away. But if, if this says 70, and my and my system says it's 70, then it isn't a system inaccuracy. It's just somebody's cold. And then I have to then we have to decide, well, do I bump that up or do I leave it? You know, There's but 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 not, like again, that's why I always tell, you know, I, I need to hear it then and not the next day. That's all, you know. There seems to be some inaccuracy because somebody Monday night stood in front of the thermometer and it read 65. And it might have, and it might have, but again, I, you know, I need to know that. According to my, according to my system, it was the same. It didn't dip, but I, but that is much more accurate than what I see on the computer sometimes. Yeah. No, I agree, but anyway, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me just be fair. And, and, and cause it could also happen that like, if these doors are open, and the and also on Monday night, the pool, because the pool isn't working, those doors are open and the fans on. There could have pulled the draft right by right by that also. So there could be there could have been a lot of things. Yeah. Tom, mm -hmm. what's the temperature supposed to be in, right here, Tom? In the in oh, the <laughs> um in the art art studio. That's what I want to know. Uh, so it's freezing in there all but the time. What I have been asked, I've been here seven years. And for seven years, I've been asking the populace, tell me what temperature you want. And historically, when I bring that to the ops committee, the ops committee always says, well, we're not going to say. We do. And we call and say, can you raise it to but whatever? Yeah, but yeah, but, yeah, but by what the time I, no, it yeah. raises up, we're gone. And, and I know. That's what I'm saying. I don't want it that it moves. In other words, I would like it if resident council told me we want the pack to be 71 degrees all the time. Okay. I can make it. Uh, you know, if, if the resident council tells me I want the fitness studio to be 68 degrees all the time. Okay. I can do that. But what I would, cause what I don't want is somebody walks in and it is 71 and they say, well, I'm cold. I'm hot. I have 150 people that want a different temperature. 
So I do want to know what temperature you want it. Not each day. Consistent. Temperature is one thing. Right. How about airflow? That makes people feel cooler than the temperature. A hundred percent. In other words, and we get that all the time, even worse over in the in the health center dining rooms. Like if I set this temperature, and we're getting like off topic, but if we set the temperature to be 70 degrees in this room, this system has a two degree differential. So it'll keep cooling and keep cooling and keep cooling until 68 and turn it off. And it's not going to turn on again until 72. And it's blowing cold air because when you want it, because in the middle of the summer, you want it to get it cool. The, the cold air has got to come in. Well, I can't make it so that air doesn't come in and the temperature changes. I can't do that. So it's, you know, again, this is a, uh, if you lined up, you know, all of my, all other facility directors in a row here from all other different facilities, the number one complaint is temperature because it's, subjective and i can only go by the temperature you want it i can't make it so that everybody's comfortable okay i think we've yeah. we can yes. stay another hour sure. and talk about temperature I'll go, I'll go back to the headless horseman it's a no-brainer <laughs> uh, but again i want to thank our staff for coming and making our presentation i'm going to take a motion to adjourn the 2023 annual meeting. And I have to adjourn the meeting, please. Okay, everybody, it's adjourned. Now, please remain. We do have um, something that we uh, have discussed uh, actually with the benefit committee and the, the uh, council is we would like to acknowledge um, some of the work that the benefit fund does, if you guys want to stick. Okay, I'd like to read this to you. Um, it's from Michelle. She couldn't be here. Anisha, and it's Odell, uh, attended the certified nursing ass assistant training classes put on by Duchess Boses held at the Dutchess County Community College in the spring of 2023, along with four of her other co-workers from Woodland Pond, all from dining or housekeeping, <clears throat> all work their full-time job here by day and, and, and we then transported them to Dutchess County by night, excuse me, I think I'm getting a cold. I, we'll, we'll go to that's another subject. But anyway, for four nights a week for their course uh, for two months, they then did their clinical rotations, took their exams, became certified. We paid for their courses, tests, and paid them a stipend for their successful completion of the program as well as offering them full-time employment as CNAs in any unit, any ship that they chose. In all cases, this resulted in career enhancement and a path of further nursing profession to further nursing professions in, if they so choose. The total cost of each student was was roughly $3,500, so approximately $17,500 for that early spring class. We had another two students complete the program for students that are not primarily English speakers in May and have had three enrolled in a program right now through Ulster County BOCES. So our total investment in this program this year will exceed $25,000, and the benefit fund has contributed $4,000 to that. I'm going to ask Ann Gordon to come up. One of the recipients of this has written a letter I think we need to share with the community. Okay. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> oh, God. Glasses. <laughs> Oh, 
Sorry about that. This is a letter written to you. Dear residents, my name is Anissa Odell. I started working at Woodland Pond in 2018 as a housekeeper on the skilled nursing unit. I love working with the residents, cleaning, talking, sitting when they don't have anyone, small jobs here and there is needed. In June of 2023, employees were informed that Woodland Pond would cover the entire course of a CNA uh, cost of a CNA course. I was very excited, but very, very, very nervous since test taking was difficult for me since childhood. This was the perfect opportunity for me and the others, the other four staff members in the CNA class to grow. After talking with Michelle and Bridget, <clears throat> I finally signed up. I not only passed the class, but also passed both written and hands-on training. I thank God every day that I work at such a caring place. I am very happy for all the examples and support I had along the way. My mother, who has been a home health aide for the past 14 years, my grandmother, who has been a CNA for the past 31 years, and also Michelle, Bridget, Rob, Carrie, April, Connie, and Sean. These are coworkers and family that have currently or have in the past worked at Woodland Pond. <clears throat> I'm very grateful to Woodland Pond for this once in a lifetime opportunity. You have no idea how much this means to me. Again, I will be forever grateful. Thank you again, Anissa Odell. We asked the other uh, successful candidates for CNA to come and talk to you. And I have to tell you, they're very shy people. <clears throat> and the idea of standing up in front of this audience terrified them. <laughs> but I'm used to you and I'm not terrified. <laughs> and I think this is a just a wonderful example of the kind of work your benefit does fund does not just for you here but for you in the future let's face it when we go to healthcare, we want to be served by a staff that likes us that is grateful to woodland pond and that will give us the best trained care and this is how it's achieved so thank you all for your generosity this year and in the years to come thanks Thank you, Ann. I want to thank you all for coming out. Yes, Vivian. Oh, Kaleidoscope? Uh, she doesn't have a report yet. I guess it's uh, on on its way to be released tomorrow, the, the output of it. Um, one of the things um, I did, you know, the, not this presentation, but the last one about all the CCRCs, um, I want to share something with you. Um, do you know what I think? Well, it doesn't do it. Um, this is what... Um, Christy showed as the trend for nationally what is going on in CCRCs. I tracked what's going on in the New York CRCs, CCRCs. So you can see from, uh, I think that's 2017, um, the yellow line is the average that the CCRCs in New York imposed. The blue arrows are the range of 
increases that they did. So you can see in some cases they're, you know, uh, up to 4%, 5% and down as low as is about one and a half percent. So our, ours is the light blue line, our average. And the other one that I put on there because I thought it was interesting is the consumer price index. That's what generates or drives your increases in social security plus a lot of things. But it's also a very quick indicator of where inflation's going. So you can see in 2022, it jumped to over seven, seven percent. Um, obviously, it you know, obviously that flows into the next year, and you can see what the CCRCs did going from four to over six and a half percent. So we track very well as Christy said, we track very low or, or mid to everything. And I think that's a wonderful um, statement for this community. But again, this is a New York, all just New York. So I think it's a little bit more relevant than looking nationally, but it was interesting to see um, how, how they work it. So anyway, that's just an FYI. All of this will be, as uh, I said, will be made available through concierge, will be made available online. Oh, shoot, she got out of here. Darn. I was going to present to Christy for Michelle the annual report of the Residence Council for 2023. It covers the committee's uh, assessments of what they did. And that will also be in the library, in the binder, and will be made available online or at the concierge tomorrow. And that's all I've got. Thanks for coming. <laughs>